Good morning and welcome to worship on this Sunday, the 14th Sunday after Pentecost. And it's good to be with you in worship this morning. The Gospel uh, for today is recorded in Matthew, the 18th chapter. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, today as we're gathered uh, together as a congregation, we hear Jesus remind us that where there are two or three gathered in his name, he is here with us. Jesus' words of God with us are words we need to hear. We've been watching the news and praying for the victims of Hurricane Laura, or areas of excessive rain, or lack thereof. And usually there is an earthquake somewhere in the world, and currently a horrific COVID-19 pandemic throughout the entire world. And yes, you guessed it, the list goes on and on. In the midst of all these things, sometimes we just need to be reminded that we are not alone. There can be great comfort in the promise of Jesus' presence, in knowing that where two or three are gathered in his name, he is there among them. But sometimes, if we've been busy trying to do things our own way, we might not be so comfortable having Jesus so close. Life together in Christian community isn't easy. Sometimes we might think of it, it would be easier to carry on as if Jesus weren't even in the room. If we believe what the scripture tells us about what Jesus taught, we might need to think twice about some of the things we say or do. Emmanuel, God with us, isn't always the God we wish for. A convenient God we can pin down and control. A God who approves our agendas and priorities. When we come together in Jesus' name for church meetings or fellowship time, or Bible study, or worship, Jesus is here among us. When we're making decisions about how the church will spend its money, or whom the church will welcome, Jesus is here among us. When the church looks around at what's going on in the world, and questions whether it should speak up or stay silent, Jesus is here among us by the power of the Holy Spirit, guiding and encouraging us and urging us further into God's beloved community. In the day-to-day -day dealings we have with one another, Jesus is here among us. And that can be a real challenge because churches can be full of troublesome people, just like the rest of the world. Sometimes people join a church thinking that they've entered some holy community 
where everyone is good and kind and loving all the time. And nobody ever gossips or spreads rumors or disagrees on anything. If somebody does have this kind of naive expectation, all it would take is serving on a committee or doing something for the church before they realize this isn't a perfect church made up of perfect people. Because there isn't such a thing. In contemporary North American church life, it's not uncommon for people to respond to hurt or conflict by losing enthusiasm or leaving the church in anger or disappointment. Maybe they decide it's time to do some church hopping or shopping, hoping they'll find a more perfect church somewhere else. Maybe they give up on church altogether. And when this happens, the congregation and those involved may carry scars for years to come. And there's no resolution, and there is no healing. Among the very people called to extend God's grace and reconciliation to the world, God's will is thwarted. Clearly, Jesus wasn't naive. He knew there was going to be disagreements and misunderstandings and conflicts when well-meaning people come together in his name. Conflict, you see, is inevitable. People will fight and disagree and wound one another. The issue is how we go about addressing and resolving these issues when we have them. Jesus knew it would not be easy. In the ancient world and in the church today, we have a terrible time handling confrontation and disagreement and mutual accountability. We have to keep learning how to live together, how to fight fairly and constructively and how to stay together in healthy community. So Matthew gives us this instruction to help us handle our sin and its consequences within the whole Christian community. I like the way pastor and theologian David Lewis summarizes what the passage teaches us. He states, people sin. Communities are made up of these sinning people. When that happens and you are involved, do something about it. Namely, go talk to the other person directly like a mature adult rather than behind his or her back. If that doesn't work, involve some others of the community as a way of involving and preserving the larger community that is affected by the dispute. The wisdom of our scriptures teach us that we are not to deal with conflict like the world often does, through yelling and slandering, gossiping, or humiliating one another. But, and it's a great big but, we're also not to sweep things under the rug as if the conflict doesn't exist, because that won't lead to resolution or reconciliation. So what should the church do if resurrection seems impossible because an offending person insists on his or her own way? Jesus' answer isn't as simple as it may seem. He says, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Well, what does that mean? Some church communities have seen this as an instruction to excommunicate, exile, or shun the person. That might seem like common sense. It may feel satisfying for a while, but I don't think this is consistent with Jesus' teaching. 
Jesus often interacted with Gentiles and tax collectors, prostitutes and other outsiders. So we need to be careful to interpret this faithfully. Far from shunning people, Jesus commands us not to give up on people, never to stop reaching out in love to them, to yearn for grace to restore what has been broken. I think context can help us understand what this passage is saying. In the verses that lead into today's gospel lesson, Jesus tells the parable of the lost sheep. Take care that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you, in heaven their angels continually see the face of my Father in heaven. What do you think? If a shepherd has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine that never went astray. So it is not the will of our Father in heaven that one of these little ones should be lost. In the verses that follow today's lesson, Peter needs to make sure he has heard correctly. Lord, if a brother sins against me, how often should I forgive? Jesus tells him, 70 times 7. You heard that correctly, 70 times 7. Or, I think, as long as it takes. Authentic community is hard to come by. It's work and can be messy at times. But living in Christian community can also give us a taste of heaven on earth when we experience the reality of God's fellowship and presence in our midst. When we gather in Christ's name with honesty and integrity, even when it's hard, amazing things can happen because Jesus is with us in our midst as we are formed by our life together. As noted author and lecturer Barbara Brown Taylor says, Jesus is letting his disciples know that they need each other not only for practical reasons, but for spiritual ones as well. They need each other because two heads are better than one. They need each other because they can accomplish more together than they can apart. They need each other like brothers and sisters need each other to remind themselves that they belong to one family. We are called to witness to the world Christ's ministry of reconciliation, which overcomes all divisions. There is so much in our world that troubles and challenges us. Hurricanes and earthquakes, fires, displays of hatred and injustice. The world desperately needs us to be the body of Christ. When we live together in Christian community, there will be conflict, but it is precisely through conflict that we can model for the world how to bind and loose one another in healthy and holy ways. This is how we can witness to the world Christ's ministry of reconciliation, which overcomes divisions through the power of Christ's self-giving love. This is how we show through our lives that goodness is stronger than evil, that love is stronger than hate, and that life is stronger than death. And may it be so among us and through us. Amen. Well, stay well and keep safe.
and I hope you have a great day and a great upcoming